My Lords, uh, I call the fourth oral question, Lord Kennedy of Southwark. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name in the order paper, and in doing so, further house my relevant interests as set out in the register. Call the Minister, Lord Greenhold. The Government will fund the cost of replacing unsafe cladding for leaseholders in residential buildings 18 metres and over in England. This will make homes safe and protect leaseholders from costs. There is no reason to suggest that there will be a funding shortfall for eligible applications in, uh, to our remediation funds. Lord Kennedy of Southwark. My Lords, the response from the Government is woefully inadequate. When is the noble Lord, the Government, and the Prime Minister going to get a grip. The thousands of people trapped in this living nightmare need their government to help and support them. When are we going to see action on the failures of the companies who built these buildings? The professional failures, the insurance companies not delivering on their obligations, the increased insurance premium costs levied on people, the building safety fund contract terms which are not fit for purpose, the unrealistic bills being sent to innocent victims, the dangerous fire safety defects not addressed, the building safety defects not addressed, the EWS1 form fiasco, which is making buildings unsaleable. What is it going to take to get the government to take, make those responsible pay up and the innocent victims get the justice they deserve? My Lords, I think that extended beyond two points, but in, in answer the, to the Noble Lord, uh, in addition to the £5.1 billion, which is uh, an unprecedented sum towards the remediation costs, we recognise the need to strengthen redress mechanisms, and that will come forward as part of the Building Safety Bill. Uh, we've also stepped forward to support the installation of many hundreds of alarms um, to ensure that uh, people do not have to pay for costly waking watch with our waking watch relief scheme of some £30 million. Uh, and we also recognise that it is for the building owners uh, to shoulder their statutory responsibilities to keep their buildings safe, and we'll continue to work with all levels of government to make sure that that happens and the costs are not passed on to leaseholders. Manchester. My Lords, four years on from Grenfell, one of the heaviest burdens being borne by those trapped living in unsafe buildings, whether cladding or otherwise, is simply not knowing when their plight will end. Will the Noble Lord the Minister now urge Her Majesty's Government to present this House with a clear timetable and deadline for resolving all outstanding issues so that residents will know when they'll be able to live in their homes safely and when they'll be able to sell them for a proper price? My Lords, we have uh, made uh, um, f further progress on the remediation of all forms of unsafe cladding. Nearly 700 buildings have had their funding approved and, uh, and, and, and around £400 million has been allocated as part of the Building Safety Fund. We recognise the, some of the problems of people with regard to um, access to EWS1, but that's why we've seen the RICS guidance that will hopefully see a more proportionate approach that has been adopted by about 80% of lenders. Hardly. Is my noble friend the Minister aware that there are instances where leaseholders have paid for recladding, mainly through their service charges, but freeholders, who are the only people who can claim for uh, re repayment, are withdrawing their applications because of onerous conditions imposed by the government? Would you consider changing the legislation to allow the leaseholders to claim for the repayment of funds rather than freeholders? Unfortunately, we are aware of such cases that my noble raised, uh, friend has raised with me, and I, and I thank him for doing so and drawing it to my attention. It is shameful that some building owners would rather refuse the government's offer of funding and push unaffordable costs onto innocent leaseholders rather than taking responsibility for ensuring that their residents are safe. The conditions of government funding are designed to ensure residents are protected from shoddy or delayed remediation works. And these works are taxpayer funded, and as they are taxpayer funded, we do require building owners to make um, reasonable efforts uh, claiming costs back from developers using warranties where possible. Lord Thurlow. One solution, one solution to funding remedial work following Grenfell is to take robust action against the French manufacturers Arconic and their then parent Saint Gobain, who supplied the defective panels. Following concerns over the safety of these panels in France, 
I read they withdrew them from sale in their own country, yet continued selling them in the UK. Disgraceful and ethically dishonest. May I ask the minister what action the government is taking to demand compensation from Arconic and or Saint-Gobain? It should not be a UK taxpayer burden. My Lords, we've got to let the inquiry t uh, take its course. But what I would say is we recognise uh, that it's thrown up deficiencies in testing. And so uh, the Secretary of State has commissioned an expert uh, group to look at uh, uh, construction products testing. And we're also establishing a new regulatory regime um, as, as well. My Lords, uh, the Minister will remember two months ago when we had uh, the... Uh, 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 emotional debates on ping-pong on, on this issue, that he said that the government would be coming forward with further measures to deal with a comprehensive settlement in respect of leaseholders, and that was the argument as to why uh, he wasn't prepared to accept the view of this House, that we should impose a timetable. Uh, my Lords, that was two months ago. Could he tell us precisely what measures the government has come forward with in the last two months? Well, we've continued uh, with the progress with the existing fund, which is uh, now at over £5 billion. And we've seen, and I said, we've seen uh, nearly 700 buildings uh, that have had the funding approved for the remediation of other forms of unsafe cladding similar to the type that we've seen on, on Grenfell Tower. Obviously, further details around the financing scheme will, will be announced in due course. Chairman. On the 24th of May, I asked the Noble Lord the Minister about the funding gap in remedi remediating external wall cladding. The Government estimates that £15 uh, billion will be required to fully remediate. The Government's putting in £5.1 billion and £2 billion from developers. That leaves a gap of £7.9 billion. In reply, the Minister said, we need to watch this very carefully. So, having cast his watchful eye over this matter, can the Minister say whether these figures have altered and how will the gap be filled? Um, my Lord, those are not official figures. There are a lot of estimates, and there's a great range in those estimates, and we're carrying out some detailed research to, so we can properly understand particularly the incidents in uh, lower-rise buildings, in medium-rise buildings, and where remediation would be required. And then we'll be in a position to know quite what are the burden that potentially would either fall on the taxpayer or on leaseholders. Uh, my Lords, I welcome the substantial support the Government has provided to deal with the cladding crisis, but on its own it's clearly not enough to deal with the problem and to deal with hardship. In February the Government announced a new tax on future high-rise development, but wouldn't it be fair to complement that with a levy on those developers who built these substandard homes? Uh, I thank my noble friend. It, of course, is right that the polluter pays, uh, and that is why we have announced a, not only a building safety levy as part of the uh, building safety bill, which will be on future high-rise developments, but also a tax on developers that is in aiming to raise some £2 billion over 10 years. Lord Paddock. My Lords, because of high demand on relatively few surveyors, the hazardous cladding on my home in London was only recently identified as needing to be replaced. We have been told that applications to the Government Remediation Fund closed in July last year. Leaseholders are now facing bills of up to £15,000 for something that was not of their making. How can the Government justify such a position? Uh First of all, uh, the, although the registration closed for the initial tranche of £1 billion, we have announced a further £3.5 billion, and therefore the process about uh, a registration uh, for the further amounts of money that are available for, if your building qualifies, uh, you would be available for government funding and will be able to register, and further details will be announced in due course. Baroness Watkins of Tavistock. My Lords, this government and previous governments have encouraged essential workers to buy into shared ownership schemes. It has been reported in the last week in various newspapers that some shared owners who own as little as a quarter of the flat in which they live are receiving demands for up to £100,000. This includes teachers, nurses, laboratory technicians. Please could the Minister outline how the Government intends to work 
with housing associations to resolve this issue swiftly. My Lords, I, I, there was media coverage of a medium-rise building where uh, uh, leaseholders and also shared owners were, being, were facing demands of around £100,000, and I was struck by that, not least because the building in question did not have unsafe cladding. So there we have a medium-rise building without unsafe cladding, with some building safety uh, defects that refer to compartmentation, and then trying to talk about levying bills of 100000 seems to be disproportionate. So I've met in that case with the Housing Association, talked it through with my officials to encourage them to find a more proportionate approach to keep people safe in these sorts of buildings.